exciting time in the city of New Orleans, and we want you to be a part of it. If you have a book, an event, or a business that you would like to promote right here on Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions, contact us at www.mtwimagesolutions.com or info at mtwimagesolutions.com. See you there. The New Orleans Saints are back, y'all, and while the city is in a football state of mind, Meet the World Image Solutions is ready to take you on the road. Join us December 20th through the 23rd when we hit not one, but two cities. First, we're going to roll into Memphis, where we're going to hit Beale Street, Fax Records, and the Lorraine Hotel. And then we're going into Nashville, where we're going to have a few more surprises for you right before we watch our New Orleans Saints run right over the Tennessee Titans. We're talking luxury bus. We're talking four-star hotel, gift bags. You do not want to miss this. So if you need more information, contact us at 504-505-5894. That's 504-505-5894. See you there. This program does not reflect the views and opinions of the New Orleans Talk Network. Viewer discretion is... Um, Louisiana State Representative District 87, Rodney Lyons. Yes. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So now, I, you notice I did not say candidate. I said Louisiana State Representative. He is already a state representative. He is running for re-election. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, do you have any opposition? I do have an opponent. Okay, you have an opponent. Yes. So now, you know, it's always tough running against an incumbent because many times incumbents have... Um, made a lot of accomplishments already. So what are some of the accomplishments that you've made in your first term? Well, you know, being my first term there, there's a, there was a particular curve of learning, which I'm so happy to have been able to, 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 done, to do. So um, my, my and people always use a platform example, and my, my platform was never a structural platform. It's based on people. So my object was to get there and represent people in a way that they could be proud of. That traditionally people say as a representative, you have to represent them. Yes. So I, I've done that. And, you know, going through it, the basis has always been issues that affect people. Um, I'm most proud of the work I've done for women and children. Um, okay. and more importantly, um, I authored legislation for domestic violence, which is a, a real big problem um, throughout the country right now and relatively here. And for kids, um, I also um, worked hard on a on a on a piece for autism uh, with medical marijuana. That was wonderful. Um, it was a lot of hard work and done, you know, in doing that. And and traditionally, when you're doing things that are, I guess, uphill or you know, out of the norm, it's tough. Um, however, uh, the four years and, and actually in four years you have four sessions. Yes. Um, we had so many specials, so we had eleven sessions in four years. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, with that comes a whole lot of experience that I'm happy to have, um, and it's been great. And I'm looking forward to doing a lot more, and we'll, we'll talk some more about, I guess, a bunch of other things that <laughs> we got a lot to <laughs> Oh, talk yeah, about. we have a lot to talk about, don't yeah. worry. And um, if you'd like to join the conversation, you can always call in at um, 563-999-1808. Or if you don't feel comfortable calling in, you can always just comment your question underneath the video and we'll read it live on the air. But we want you to be a part of this conversation. So don't be shy. It's going to be fine. This is going to be a great interview. And we want you to be a part of it. So um, let's talk a little bit. You said you did a lot for um, women and children in, yes. in your district. And yes. you did a lot with um, domestic violence. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. One of the biggest problems we've had, and when we look at the, the cases of, of women who actually file restraining orders on individuals who either harass them or threaten them and so forth, mm -hmm. 
you find a lot of times that that individual will always have an opportunity or find an opportunity to see the scar or hurt the individual female. So what my goal was was to allow the, the, the judges per se. Mm -hmm. If you had a, a restraining order um, filed against an individual who basically had all the traits of domestic violence involved, the, the criteria of that particular arrest or that actual order would allow a judge the opportunity now to make that individual go submit themselves to, for counseling, um, for mental evaluation, what have you. So if something is out of order at that moment and that time, that judge can make that decision um, to get involved. Um, there's a lot more we can do. It's just tough to get it done in such a short period of time um, with other you know things that happen. Yes. But this is a step um, that we had a lot of work involved in and a lot of the groups were with me working on it. So we, we got it passed and it, it's there now. Something that gives them another tool to get some things done. Well, I'll tell you, um, that that is wonderful because um, domestic violence, as you said, is a big problem. It is. Um, and um, there are so many people who are just afraid to come forward because they don't know what's going to happen to them or what may happen to the children. And so that means so knowing that you're passing this legislation, I'm sure that's it's going to be big for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, it passed, and, and it was it, it was touted, you know, you know, by the. Um, the the judges supported it wholeheartedly as another tool that they could have um, to, to get people through evaluation processes to prevent some of these things from happening. Okay, so this is more of um, preventative, not not so much reactionary. Yes, it's preventative, and we need more preventative measures in there. Um, with the mental illness project um, being like it is so far, in almost all those cases, we have some of those issues there. And we have to try as we can you know, to create opportunities to intervene. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. So um, what are some of the things that you want to do in this next term? Well, this next term, I'm going to go back um, to looking at some of the conditions um, in early child education. Um, funding that piece is paramount because we have to deal with, you know, our young kids coming up. We find that, you know, all the experts tell you that um, when we talk about jail cells and building prisons, one of the, you know, the, the criteria that was, was, was communicated to me is that they look at an individual kid from third grade. And if they look at the numbers and where a kid is at third grade, and they realize where they're going to be later on. And this mm -hmm. is a criteria that they use. So the early childhood piece is really, really important. So we can get kids in there early so they can develop dialogue, they can develop all those early learning skills to do so. That's the first step in, in doing things better for down the future. Now, when we're, when we're judging um, children at such a young age, are we almost predicting that they're going to maybe go that wrong direction? That's what they're doing. They're predicting that based upon the education model where they are. And that's a prediction. And as loosely as it was shared, you know, it's a concern. Because oftentimes when we talk about kids who are going into kindergarten and pre-K, mm -hmm. um, kids who actually have opportunities to, to participate in those programs are almost certainly ahead of other kids who start school later than them because it's always a catch-up. And then we often run into problems where kids have a hard time learning things and they consider them to have learned disabilities, what have you. It's just that they had that opportunity to start right. eating. Right, and I mean, and it kind of becomes a little bit of a slippery slope it is. because we're not expecting the most from the child. So the child's like, well, if they don't expect anything out of me, why do I have to give them anything? Oftentimes, and it's mm -hmm. just a struggle to, to, to get to where, where they are. Um, Self-esteem issues, um, different things that, you know, when young kids go through because of developmental issues based upon the fact that they're assuming that because kids are so far behind mm -hmm. that they can't make it. Right, and that's not always the case. They're, not always the case. I mean, and and it's amazing that this happens with, oh, we have a caller. Before we even um, continue this, we're going to let this caller jump in. Jump in, 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 Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I hear you. Can you hear us? Oh, yes, I can hear you. Hi. Um, I actually I actually just want to have a I have a comment more than a question. I met um State Representative Lyons in 2008, 2018. Um my son actually has autism and 
he was our champion. And I don't think people, because he really doesn't brag on himself, so I want to brag on him. He took a very, very hot topic of medical marijuana, giving it to children. But he saw the need. He looked at other places where children were getting help, and he had empathy for us. When I tell you at the state capitol, Rodney was the only person that had empathy for us mm-hmm. as parents that heard us out that would take up take our phone calls late at night. Like people don't really understand how instrumental state representatives are really in our lives. Um, I think because a lot of, you know, sometimes you just see them on the news, but he's really in the community. He comes to the disability meetings. Anytime I've asked him to come, he's shown up. And I just wanted to toot his horn a little bit because I don't, I don't think he gets enough recognition for his heart. He has, like, he has a servant's heart, and he really is a public servant. I just wanted to put that comment out there. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you Thank so you. much for sharing that. What do, you, what do you say to that? I mean, that's something that, I mean, when you hear somebody who actually says these types of things about you, and it's probably not something that you go and look for. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes, what do you think? Well, I, I just, you know, I, I always look back at the things that you're supposed to do. Um, the calling that you have um, to do that, because everything I do is not about me. It's mm-hmm. about the other people. It's about people. So, you know, I don't always toot my horn. Um, it's just important that people understand that, you know, people are human just like them. Absolutely. And you have to have somebody there who's willing to take risks and do things for helping people. And I've done that throughout my life. So that's, that's the, you know, basically, that is my heart, I guess. You know, but that's, that's real. Thank yeah. you very much. And um, just touching on the autism piece, I mean, there are people who think that because a person has autism that they may be less intelligent or they can't do certain things. And it just may mean that they learn differently. Yeah, it is. And the piece that we did was based upon the four debilitating conditions that we decided um, to do because Mm -hmm. um, normal quality of life issues are the most important. Um, For for example, um, I have a friend of mine um, who has a a son. mid-teenage son, who has difficulty um, with you know, some of the characteristics of autism. They don't like to be in close spaces. They don't like people in their personal space, for example. Right. And sometimes they have anxiety attacks and what have you based upon that. But those conditions, they, they prescribe some of the worst opioids, some of the worst medication um, for those things, and giving, giving young people an opportunity to, to exist mm-hmm. and families an opportunity um, this gentleman could not bring his son to church. Mm-hmm. He could not bring his son to dinner because he would have those those attacks and what have you. So have an opportunity to to get the the, the medical product um, made it easier to him. So now he can have a conversation like you and I have it. Um, he can sit so the family can go together to dinner. Uh, they can go to other events like a family. So their quality of life has now changed. So creating those opportunities for families like that, including um, young kids, young kids are you know are really the most um, misunderstood you know part of it because they go through so much. Um, some of them have seizures and what have you and things. So these conditions were very very important to me. Um, not only knowing have friends and, and family who suffer with autism, some of those conditions to fight for those people. Now um, you mentioned um, a couple of times the medical marijuana. How how does that fit into all of this? Well, in, in 2015, the state actually. Uh, passed a law allowing um, medical marijuana, even though we didn't have it yet in the state, uh, mm-hmm. for certain conditions for treatment. Uh, in 2016 was when we started to look at um, some of the issues of, of PTSD and what have you. There's a lot of people that feel like medical marijuana is always recreational marijuana. Everyone looks like that, and they think it's people want to get high. So the fight to get those conditions in there were painstaking. So I decided in 2017 to start working on the piece for those conditions. Right. Um, as of right now, um, PTSD is there. We have cancer and several other chronic issues that's there. And for the first time in August, the product has been available here in Louisiana. So that's the, the, the short version of the history of it. But now, you know, in tinctured oils that, that's there, um, we're going to look forward to other types. And we did inhaling um, last year. And can you imagine a kid having a seizure right now and 
You can't you can't give him any medication. You can't do anything to help him. So now we have inhalers, which is similar to the little bronchial tube. Right. Thing. So you can get that into a, a child's um, passageway so you can get medication and stop those from evolving. Um, stops the kid from hurting himself, from hurting others. So those things have been relevant um, out there. So it's a it's a large but very, very important piece. Wow. Now, I know some people who may not um, smoke marijuana or may not believe in marijuana, they're like, are you saying that children would do this? Well, a lot of people, you know, think that during the history when you say, mar- metal, you say marijuana, period, they think somebody's trying to get high. Right. But it's not. They see um, the, they the cannabis see the, um, is shown through yes. studies to be some of the safest, um, most accurate, if you will, mm-hmm. for, for, for pain and other conditions. So this was something we had to work at doing. And it, it's been great. So I'm looking forward to the results. And next year, for all the, the women out there who are suffering from chronic illness or fibromyalgia, I'm coming to help you guys the next session. We're going to start working on that piece. It's very, very important for chronic pain. Point to tell them. Well, I'm glad you told them that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break. But yeah. um, when we get back, um, I'd like to just jump into a, a little bit more into your platform, some, some more of the plans that you have for yes. the district. Forward to it. All right, so we are talking with um, State Representative Rodney Lyons um, from District 87. Um, you can call in and ask your questions, or you can just comment your questions underneath the video. But either way, join the conversation. So you stay right there, and we'll be right back. And while we're gone, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you with the new year of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And this year, we're moving to Monday night with brand new, exciting guests and engaging literary conversation. And we want our listening audience to be there with us because this is going to be a year you will not forget. Catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m., right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. And you can also reach us on the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook page, the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube page, and we're on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. So catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. See you there. The New Orleans Saints are back, y'all. And while the city is in a football state of mind, Meet the World Image Solutions is ready to take you on the road. Join us December 20th through the 23rd when we hit not one, but two cities. First, we're going to roll into Memphis where we're going to hit Beale Street, Stax Records, and the Lorraine Hotel. And then we're going into Nashville where we're going to have a few more surprises for you right before we watch our New Orleans Saints run right over the Tennessee Titans. We're talking luxury bus. We're talking four-star hotel, gift bags. You do not want to miss this. So if you need more information, contact us at 504 504- 505-5894. That's 504-505-5894. See you there. New year, new show. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you. And we're back. This is your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm sitting here in the studio with State Representative Rodney Lyons from District 87. And so we've been just sitting here talking about your platform and what you were able to accomplish with your last term and what you would like to do with your upcoming term. Well, it's going to be a continuation of of what I've done. Um, If, you know, for those who who don't know, my history or my background has been in community activism all all the time. I'm serving in a community where I'm at, and I find that, the more, the more you know about people, the better you represent them. Yes. And the only way you can do that is go where they are, so, which is why I'm so busy in the community. Um, oftentimes, I'm either at school events. Um, I'm always at community um, meetings and what have you. And I stick my nose in a lot of places just to find out how things are going, which helps well, that's, me. That's later. very important um, because to be a leader, people need to know who you are. And there that's are correct. so many communities who cannot name who they're – um, council person is or who their state representative yes. is. So it's very important for you to be able to get your face out there. And, and not only with the face, the work. You know, you have yes. to do that. So um, it's a continuation of the fact that 
Uh, when I started this four years ago, I, I promised the people that they have someone here that's successful. But first of all, they can reach me. Um, I'll be accountable for the decisions that we make representing them, and to represent them with the integrity that they will require. Um, I don't. I never had a, a whole bunch of, of, of drama and spiel about presenting things to people. Um, I'm just straight to it and and honest about what I do. Um, that obligation is there. Um, it's built in. So that makes it easier to deal with people because I'm not, you know, performing any time. Right. Like maybe some people do, but I'm just genuine. So I just, you know, I work that way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about um, um, what your your plans are with the police force. Um, one of the things that you um, that you talked about in your um, platform is body camera. Yes. Um, as we transition through the years and things happen, Mm -hmm. um, I think in what was it, 2017 or so forth, there was some, several incidents in the parish um, where, you know, shootings were involved, um, some incidents where the police were involved in the sheriff's office, and some of the information was out about Jefferson Parish, JPSO, and body cameras. Um, at that time, you know, I made a commitment to, to look into, you know, that piece, um, and I have been um, in conversation um, with Sheriff Lepinto over the years, and next year we're looking at legislation and working on some things to do that. Um, this year, in this past session, I did a, um, a HCR, which is a House Concurrent Resolution. And what that resolution does is it, it passed through and it, it sends a message to the State Police Commission to gather data and gather information um, relative to body cameras throughout the state. Right. Um, as of right now, the state police is the only organization in the state completely, fully, that has body cameras that we know of record. Um, so they're going to gather that information as to who have them, where are they at, um, how often they use, um, some, of the, um, some of the data as it pertains to interactions, um, positive interactions, negative interactions, um, whether it's, it's, it's time of day, it's certain types of investigations or certain types of crime or information. It's the whole gambit of what those things represent um, throughout the throughout the state, and then we're going to sit down and we're going to look at some of the, the pieces involved in it. So body cameras actually work. Yes, they do. Um, we we found that um, you know people always want to know about you know the trouble and things that happen. Um, we found several negative instances, but we found a wonderful list of positives. Mm -hmm. um, we've had several sheriff departments and the, uh, police departments who had good positive activity um, that they should share, and you want them to share um, with individuals. Um, everybody knows someone either in law enforcement, um, either they're, they're working there or they're family members. Yes. And the biggest deal was make sure that not only they are accountable on doing what's right, because there are some people who does not always do what's right, but the positive is when you have those interactions that the public can see, um, as well as the individual departments as to the officers following policy and protocol. Um, are they, you know, normally um, courteous? Um, and then you get to see some of the things that they deal with, um, you know, from the, the, the public and what have you, and how they actually maintain and do certain things. So it, it's, it's a good thing. And oftentimes when investigations, you know, come after certain incidents happen, right. um, those cameras can tell the story yes. as, as to what's really going on. So the public, the... The um, general taxpayers is, is asked you know, for some of that data to be available here in, in Jefferson, and it's it's my job as a legislator to present that information. Okay, well, we have another caller on the line. Um, caller, are you there? Caller? Hello? Okay, I guess they're going to... I don't know. Maybe they got disconnected. We'll okay. just keep on talking. Keep talking. <laughs> okay. So um, you you talk you were talking about the body cameras. Um, yes. so um, along along with that, um, that's more about also about public safety, keeping the public safe, but also keeping yes. your um officers safe as well. That's correct. That's correct. And that's that's the the, the thing of evaluation. Um, we know that whatever departments who actually have them now. Mm -hmm. They should be compiling that data, and it helps everyone else throughout the state. Anywhere else, when we look at you know things that we ask for, um, I think one of the biggest issues um, with it right now was the fact that storing some of the data, all mm -hmm. the data, 
it because it costs so much. And right. So, Where do you put that? So do whether you... you put it, how long do you, do you store it for, what yes. conditions do you have? So we're going to work through all of those things um, and, and come up with something that we can start working with. Okay. So be well, I think the caller's there now. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Yeah. No, thanks for taking my call. Uh, uh, how you doing today, Miss Lawson? I'm wonderful. Thank you for asking. All right, great, great. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, talk to the public, Mr. Loins. Uh, it's great to have you, uh, you know, speaking with the public. And you kind of stole my thunder just now. I was wanting to call you and ask you about the same exact thing y'all was talking about just now as, as far as the storage goes with the footage. And I wanted to ask you a question about that, concerning that, because surrounding parishes are using um, this technology to uh, help, you know, solve crime and also tell a story of what happened when the officer has an interaction with a, a pedestrian or, a, a, you know, a, a civilian or anything like that. So what is the problem with that? Because Sheriff Lepinto is on record stating that he does have to store the footage, even when it's not useful footage. He has to store it for a certain amount of time, and it's a, a tremendous amount of money to store all that data. I can imagine having to store it all of the data from every phone call coming into the sheriff's office. Um, my question to you is, do other parishes have to comply to that rule of storing the data? And if so, why isn't Jefferson Parish moving forward with that initiative of, um, you know, putting crime cameras, I mean, um, um, body cameras on the officers? And I also have a follow-up question to that. I want to just ask you before you answer that. Uh, how long do you think it would take to get the legislation passed to where they won't have to store miscellaneous data from the body cameras from, from police officer? Uh, do you think we can get that done in the next uh, legislative session or, you know, is this going to be, you know, uh, it's going to take a long time to get done? I'll hang up and listen. Well, I don't, I don't think it, it, it may take a long time. Um, it's, a, it's a process, whereas you have to find a middle ground there. Uh, I understand the piece, you know, where storage is an issue. Um, because let's just say a typical officer on a regular day on a 12-hour shift, for example, he may have 50 to 100 interactions uh, with individuals on the calls or whether it's a traffic stop or whether it's any other call for service. So it's a lot of data that's there that has to be downloaded and stored, um, and, and you don't know which one you're looking for at any particular time. Is it, a, is it a good deal? Is it a bad deal, um, per se, with the interaction that you look for? So it's a lot of data that's there. Um, it's a cost issue um, to the departments and looking at how much, and I think you kind of almost helped me answer the question when you talk about miscellaneous um, um, information. You know, so what type of, um, of interactions do you want to mandate that we, we store, where we store them for how long? That's going to be part of the conversation uh, when we do that. Um, and keep in mind, you know, I'm, I'm one legislator from Jefferson Parish. Um, and I'm one of 105. And everyone else has a either a sheriff's office or a police department um, in their jurisdiction. And oftentimes, when you do certain things, it affects everybody in the state. So to do something particular for your parish is a start. And we have a delegation here. We're going to work with um, the sheriff and see what we can to to work with that piece. But whenever you, you you put a cost issue on the table, it's always a hard fight. Um, but Hopefully, you know, we can narrow it down to the most important interactions and see what we can do with that. Yeah, I can imagine that um, part of that cost would include um, system upgrades. Yes. You know, maybe in some cases, maybe having to buy all new computers. Yes. And, and it just it's just an algorithm that, that, that is tough because of, of the, the size of the, of the file data and the cost of it. So we're going to work on it. And. Right now, we, we haven't started, so we're going to make progress, you know, going forward, just the, the conversation piece. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can um, see how that could, could be a challenge because some people are going to say, well, that's money that we don't need to spend. And unfortunately, a lot of times in the greater New Orleans area and probably also um, Jefferson Parish included, you know, we'll, we suffer from that, okay, this is good enough, or why do we need to spend the extra money? We've heard people say, why do we need a new airport? Mm -hmm. um, that our old airport was just fine, even though our old airport is not as updated as many of the airports you see in other cities. Yes, it's real nice. I'm looking forward to the grand opening. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this fall, uh, it's a real nice structure. Um, there was a lot of work involved. We still have the flyover, 
um, to get get into that um, facility right. into the airport off I ten. That's going to be coming along, but the airport is a is a lovely facility. Yeah, I saw a little piece of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, now speaking of the airport, when the, when the airport opens, that creates jobs. Um, we talked a little bit off um off camera about the um Avondale shipyards, um mm-hmm. how that can also create create jobs. Um, that is a um, big part of what you're looking at as well, you know, creating my, more jobs and more minority jobs. Yes, and you know, as we talked off camera, you know, the Avondale shipyard piece is, is very, very important because of the West Bank. You know, the majority, if not all, of the new growth on, in Jefferson Parish is on the West Bank. Um, as we work hard to lure industry and business here for economic growth, we have to have a strong, you know, able workforce mm-hmm. that can facilitate that. So that's the hard piece of doing it. Um, as Avondale starts to progress, now we're looking at bringing more industry in, which should help. But our biggest challenge now is to make sure we have a, a able workforce that can handle industry. So we're going out asking for people to come here. Um, we're always ready to have right, forces right. there to do it. Um, and, and I was telling you earlier, I'm proud of the Delgado River City campus because it's an opportunity for us to grow and have technical training um, for, for several industries, including high tech. Here mm-hmm. in Jefferson, and, and we people forget that. that we actually do have higher education over here on the West Bank. Yes, yes, and that's a beautiful new campus that opened last year, um, and so it's it's something that's earmarked just for that growth. And um, as we progress um, slowly into the, the future with more economic mm-hmm. opportunities, it's going to bring jobs here. It's going to allow people to live here on the West Bank, um, work here, earn you know better than average income wages, and jobs in industry here, and continue our growth, which. You know, overall handles the, it raises the quality of life for uh, another level for us. So, if the West Bank would truly be the best bank, is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, I get in trouble a lot. Yeah, but don't say it. Don't from, say from it. My folk, but, you know, the West Bank, the West Bank is 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 a a place to to be reckoned with. Okay, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. So we're gonna take a quick break on that note. Um, take another um, commercial break, but we want you to continue to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when I say subscribe, I'm talking about go to our YouTube channel where this show is playing live as well. We are playing live right on um, YouTube on the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube page. So go there, give us a subscribe, help us to build that channel, and then enjoy your Horizons experience. So we will be right back, and when I get back, Rodney Lyons will still be here. I'll still be here. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll be right back. Do not go anywhere. In fact, just invite some friends to come along. Give us a call. Let's (laughs) talk. And we want you to be a part of it. If you have a book, an event, or a business that you would like to promote right here on Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions, contact us at www.mtwimagesolutions.com or info at mtwimagesolutions.com. See you there. The New Orleans Saints are back, y'all. And while the city is in a football state of mind, Meet the World Image Solutions is ready to take you on the road. Join us December 20th through the 23rd when we hit not one, but two cities. First, we're going to roll into Memphis where we're going to hit Beale Street, Fax Records, and the Lorraine Hotel. And then we're going into Nashville where we're going to have a few more surprises for you right before we watch our New Orleans Saints run right over the Tennessee Titans. We're talking luxury bus. We're talking four-star hotel, gift bags. You do not want to miss this. So if you need more information, contact us at 504-505-5894. That's 504-505-5894. See you there. This program does not reflect the views and opinions of the New Orleans Talk Network. Viewer discretion is advised. This program does not reflect the views and opinions of the people. And we're back. This is your girl, Dr. Rodney M. Lawson. And I am sitting here talking with State Representative Rodney Lyons from District 87. 
And we were just talking a bit about, um, we were talking about body cameras. We talked a bit about um, your work um, helping people with autism and your work with um, domestic violence. Um, and now let's just jump into education. Well, there's, it's a big pool to jump into. It's a big uh, pool. And going back to the education piece when we talked about the early childhood mm -hmm. piece, um, it, was, it was very, very important for us to, to find um, available slots and monies. I think this year um, the administration we put in like $20 million into early childhood education. The early estimates were $86 million were needed to fully wow. allow everyone in the state the opportunity to do so. And in my district, 87, I have some of the most um, impoverished areas where we have young, young kids, young mothers. Um, so what I did this year, because of the fact that we had so many agencies you know, tied to it, mm -hmm. um, I did a resolution bringing the um, Department of Education, um, DCFS, and several other agencies together to find ways to, to allow young mothers. And my goal was to have you know, young mothers who maybe had, um, had jobs at the work. So mm -hmm. the babies are home with grandma, auntie, and they're just there and they're being watched. Um, you know, I had one of the one of the darndest conversations two years ago um, with a three year old. With the three year old, yeah, three year old was out front. I was I was out doing some things in the neighborhood, and the little kid said hello. You know, very nice. And we had a little conversation with him and his I guess with his sister. She was two years older than him. Yes. And it it it, it really amazed me at the intellect that these young kids have. Absolutely. And, and, and having a conversation with me. And they um, see things so simplistically yes. sometimes where many times we just make it too complicated. Yes, and, and they were wanting to know what was I doing, uh, you know, in the neighborhood, and we were talking. So those opportunities for those kids to have an opportunity to really have early child education means that if you don't do that, you're leaving somebody behind. So my goal was to have those agencies come together. I'm saying, you don't have any money, you have resources. So come to the table with your resources, and let's find a way that this mom could take, when she gets off from work, sit her kids down at a table like some moms do and talk about shapes, colors, mm -hmm. sizes, interactions, start talking with the, with the same progressive um, criteria that they do in those particular classes with kids. Give a parent an opportunity. If you can't afford a space for them to have their kids at, and some of them couldn't afford it, um, have an opportunity for those who want to keep the kids. So they're and gonna, that, that is a that is a big thing. I mean, if I thing. can't afford to put my child into the best preschool, so to speak, does that mean that my child cannot have a fair chance at success? That's correct. So we're looking for a report to come out before the end of this year, maybe early January, mm -hmm. as to how those resources can come together mm -hmm. so we can have young mothers. And I've been talking with that in the school system um, because there's a curriculum there that we need to match that gives an opportunity for a young mother you know, that you can sit down with your kids and you can start developing some of those skills until we have an opportunity to get them in a program and a slot where they can go. So that piece brought me there, and we're going to continue to fight for funding to make sure that we can fund everybody in the state of opportunity. That's our future. Yes. That is. And we can't give up on our future. We, we can't give up on our future. And I know future. it's so easy to often we hear so many people say, these kids these days, you can't tell them anything. You can't do this, you can't do that. They don't want to do this and they don't want to do that. And then we don't have enough people who are trying to yes. work with them. Yes, and we're giving them an opportunity. I mean, those resources are already there. So we're going to tap into it and make sure it happens. Now, some of the resources for older kids uh, we had mm -hmm. talked about was the TOPS program. Yes. Um, this year was the year that um, again, TOPS is fully funded. Um, it's a merit-based um, program, scholarship that's mm -hmm. there. Um, See, back when I was in school, it was called the Taylor Plan, and it was basically for one for one grade point average and over. Mm -hmm. But now I think it's different levels. It, it, it's changed now. It, there's tops and there's there's um the the other expanded edition, um, which which pays for a uh, more um of, of housing what have you, um that they have there. The program has changed since it was you know initially instituted years ago. Um, and it, it, I made myself feel old when I said that. Well, you're not that old, but, <laughs> but it's a good program. But we also have Go Grants. Go Grants is a, is a need-based program, and this year was the first time um, when we had a, a small budget surplus, we put $60 million in Go Grants, and that's a need-based um, scholarship that, that those who are um, less fortunate in, in those areas can apply for and receive. 
Now, how do they find information about that? Um, the Department of Education. It's there. Um, they're there, and I don't have the the website at the mm -hmm. top of my head here to, to, to give you. Well, no, um, and, no, but, but the reason but I NASA asked, has it. But the reason I asked that question is because sometimes um, less fortunate kids may not always be getting to the computer. They may not always know that that resource is there. Yes. So um, what should kids be doing if they want to find out more about these resources? Well, when I'm there, and, and I often visit, you know, all the, the four high schools in, in my district, um, Higgins, Helen Cox, John Area, and West Jefferson. Um, so I can interact with those young people. And when we have civics classes that we I talk to, and I always talk to the counselors, you know, make sure you ask the questions of what's available to you mm -hmm. so you can know what to apply for. And don't wait until it's, it's, it's February and you graduate in May. Yes. You know, you start this process way in your sophomore year, um, preparing yourself for, um, for, for college, for higher education, at whatever level you want to go to. Mm -hmm. And we make sure that information is there. And they have it at the school. Yeah. They, I, I think a lot of times students think that graduation is so far off, mm -hmm. and they don't have to worry about it until they're seniors. But often by then, it's too late. You can't, you can't get your grades. If, if you've been a 1.5 for the first three years, <laughs> and then you decide to be yeah. a 4.0 in it, it, your it, senior year. <laughs> it's unfortunate, and, and that's what we always uh, we always tell tell families and tell kids. You know, as soon as you get to high school, start preparing to end. Don't yes. wait until the last to do that. So, um, you know, higher ed has been fully funded as well, K-12 this mm -hmm. year. So, and we did something wonderful this year with the, um, with the raises. We put that in, into the MFP formula. And the MFP formula is a, uh, a formula that's a um, pro rata base on the students each, each parish has there. So there's a formula that includes the raises or monies for teacher pay that's going to stay in that formula. Mm -hmm. um, so we're there, and we're just trying to start with that with that main component is to have teachers there who are, are making a, a decent wage that we can keep and retain good quality teachers. Wonderful, wonderful. Because I know that that's a challenge in so many – so many people are running away mm -hmm. from the teaching profession because they say it doesn't pay enough yes. or they may not feel safe. Yes. So it's good to know that there is legislation being discussed to help them to come back to the classroom. Well, that was passed. That was passed last year. Good. And so in Jefferson with the millage that we passed, so our, our parish teachers are moving up into the top five of the state right now. Wonderful. So we want to continue to do that. And um, I, I'm, I'm happy you know, by what, we, what we're doing so far with the efforts that we're there. I'm going to keep working and fighting to make sure that everything happens for our kids. Wonderful. Now, um, with that said, um, I know, you know, Jefferson Parish, Orleans Parish, these are all basically different cities, all within one. Parish, yes, one yes. state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, my, my, my question is that you'll have many people who may live in Jefferson Parish but work in Orleans Parish, or you'll have people who live in Orleans Parish who may... Um, go and get um, a lot of, you know, they may go out to eat or they may do their shopping in Jefferson Parish. There's a lot of shared. So do you you find yourself having to work a lot with the um, the New Orleans-based state representatives? Absolutely. Uh, we have a we have a wonderful working uh, relationship uh, out there, and we've been working hard on the basis, and I think Mayor Cantrell did a great job of, of really staying and pushing that when she came in. This is one region. Yes. Um, as this whole region go, you know, as New Orleans go, or Jefferson goes with it, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, so we work well on the issues that are there for the region, and, and do that even though each entity has its own, you know, has its own beat heartbeat, if you will. But we work together very, very well, and I have a good working relationship with everybody in the in the region. Per se. <laughs> um, I'm I'm very proud of that. And um, I think that's something that you actually work toward. Um, building yes. relationships. Relationships are, are the most important thing. Like I said earlier mm -hmm. on the onset, I'm one of 105 people. So in order for you to get legislation passed, you need a simple majority of 53 votes to get something passed. In our delegation, we have nine representatives um, from Jefferson there. So we clearly need everybody else there, which um, you know I, I've learned a long time ago that it's easier to talk to people you know, than to fight with them. <laughs> and so you find common ground. So I work well with um, everyone in the north, everyone in the west, um, some some of our colleagues, you know, to the um, east of me, and even down south. So I work well with everyone. Relationships is important, um, which is very important, you know, when I return back um, this year. It's because we're having, a, uh, I guess, a, a large vacation of members. 
in the legislature, and we're going to lose some of the institutional knowledge that we have here. Mm -hmm. And uh, with, with me being there for 11 sessions and working hard, I'm going to have seniority, not just in the legislature, but here in my delegation. That's a big responsibility. Um, it's, it's a big responsibility. And relationships are always the key. It's making things work, understanding what people's needs are. And you're able to, I could not explain to people what the needs are in Jefferson if I have no respect or, or really have passion or empathy for the people who are in Cabot Parish or in Calcasieu Parish. So working together with those individuals are really, really, um, it's really important. Absolutely. Well, I think we need to actually take one more quick break before the end of the show. We're almost there. I thought we had a caller. No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but, you know, speaking of these callers, we do have a little time left on the show. So if you would like to call in or comment your question underneath the video, we still have time to address your question and get it answered on the air. So I don't want you to forget. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. We will be right back. We're going to take our last break of the hour. And then we're going to jump into some more issues that um, we haven't yes. even touched on seniors yet. Oh, that's great. That's a party. Yeah. <laughs> that's I, a I party. <laughs> yes, I can't wait to talk about it. Okay, so we will be right back. You guys stay right there. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. We just have about 10 minutes left in the show. And we really want to make sure that you're a part of that conversation. So you stay right there. Y'all, it's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you with the new year of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And this year, we're moving to Monday night with brand new exciting guests and engaging literary conversation. And we want our listening audience to be there with us because this is going to be a year you will not forget. Catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m., right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. And you can also reach us on the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook page, the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube page, and we're on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. So catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. See you there. The New Orleans Saints are back, y'all. And while the city is in a football state of mind, Meet the World Image Solutions is ready to take you on the road. Join us December 20th through the 23rd when we hit not one, but two cities. First, we're going to roll into Memphis where we're going to hit Beale Street, Stax Records, and the Lorraine Hotel. And then we're going into Nashville where we're going to have a few more surprises for you right before we watch our New Orleans Saints run right over the Tennessee Titans. We're talking luxury bus. We're talking four-star hotel, gift bags. You do not want to miss this. So if you need more information, contact us at 504-505-5894. That's 504-505-5894. See you there. New year, new show. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda Young. So this is the last segment of the hour. And as promised, I really would like Representative Lyons to talk about <laughs> his plan for our seniors. You know, that is basically our institutional knowledge of our community. That is, that is, that is. There, there's two spectrums to, to my heart, and that's kids first and the seniors. Um, and when I started to, to do this four years ago, I was really, really concerned about, you know, the activities of seniors. Um, how their quality of lives depends upon, you know, what other people, you know, actually do. Mm -hmm. So how restrictive it was. So I visited several different senior groups, the Confluent Asian and what have you, and I discovered that there were senior groups in my neighborhood who were actually putting their own thing on, doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this doesn't seem right, you know, because there's so much out there. Right. So I got to talking to them and, and between the line dancing and the bingo games and everything else that we talked about um, is that they need to have access to some of the things that were, were available to them. Right. So in, in Marrero, we have a Marrero Senior Guild, which has been in existence for um, at least seven years, five or six years. And in Woodmere, we have a, a community center where our seniors were gathering 
but they weren't represented, it wasn't organized. And then and old Harvey was the same thing. So I basically, you know, we sat down and we talked and I encouraged them to form their own senior gym and recruit their members who are there. And yeah. let's talk about how we have access to the resources that everyone else in the parish is having access to. So I'm proud of, of, of my ladies for, for forming those two guilds. And now they have an opportunity to, to really, really enjoy themselves. They don't have to go across through the tunnel or other places to, right. to engage the they neighbors. They don't have to go far. They can engage right where they, they are. They can engage the neighbors. They can engage themselves in other activities that they want to do. And the hardest part was getting them to understand that, you know, you got somebody fighting you. So once we, 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 we came to the agreement that, you know what, you're going to fight, we're going to enjoy ourselves. Yes. And, and we've done that. Um, so they're, they're very important. Um, you know, the knowledge that we have is, is, is vital. And I don't think a lot of younger people today take advantage of that um, as our seniors, the wealth of wisdom that we have. And so that's a, that's a, a real big deal for me is make sure that they have the right quality of life that they deserve. Uh, you mentioned um, the young people often don't understand. Do you have programs where you get to bring your seniors and your young people together? That's coming. That's coming up pretty soon. It was important that they get organized, and they've done that. Um, they put themselves in a, in a position now that they can operate Wonderful. Um, as, as nonprofit groups, and we're going to be doing some of that. Uh, they're going to be coming up to the Capitol. Um, like I bring kids up every year. So we're going to be engaging ourselves in a lot of activity. So it, it's, you know, the, the sky's the limit right now. Wonderful. So I'm happy about that. I really am. Well, that's a very good segue for, because we just have a few minutes left in the show, for um, what are those last closing um, thoughts that you want to leave the audience with? Well, what I want you guys to really understand is that, you know, when I came here four years ago, I promised to have integrity. I promised to be uh, the guy who represents you and be testable to you, and I've done that. Um, I showed up for work every day. I missed one day, one day of, of session in four years. of the 11 sessions. I just did one day. Mm. Um, I How dare you be sick? Well, you know, <laughs> if one thing happens, I'm human. But I have a 90, 90% or 90 so percent um, rate of effectiveness. Um, when I bring legislation to the House, I get it passed based on relationships and the need that we work hard for. So as we go forward, it's important that you understand that you have someone who traditionally um, loves people. Um, I fell in love with my district, and from what I understand, they love me as well because we work hard for each other, and that's the part. I could not do it without you know, my district being involved with me, interacting with me. So, you know, I, I stood on not a platform but a foundation, um, a foundation of integrity, uh, character, and an obligation to always do what's right for the people I represent. So as we, we, talk, we tackle many, many tough issues going forward uh, here from women's rights, um, equal pay, um, education pieces, things that involve all parts of the, the spectrum here. You got a guy who's going to continue to work with you, and my integrity um, is what stands out before me. So I'm looking forward to people voting number 106 you know, when they go to the ballot October 12th so I can continue representing you. Um, we've had four representatives in, in, in 10 years. I'm going to give you the consistency, I promise. And uh, we're going to continue working hard for the people of Jefferson and District 87. All right, there you have it. This is Louisiana State Representative Rodney Lyons, District 87. 87. So um, in case you don't know, which I hope you do, early voting starts September 28th. 28th through, September 28th through October 5th. You can right. early vote. September 28th is this Saturday, so you'll have a week to early vote. And all you people who are going to Jacksonville for the Saints game, make sure you vote early because October 12th, you're all going to be on the bus. And I can't imagine you coming back home from the, from the Saints win to find out that somebody's in the office that you didn't really want because you forgot um, to go vote. So I tell you, vote. Drew Brees is not running for state representative. <laughs> <laughs> and neither is Teddy Bridgewater, nor yes, Sean Payton. Not any other office here. So <laughs> do your duty and, and go vote early so you can... And enjoy yourself, enjoy the win um, while we're here. There you go. So he makes a very good point. If you are going away to the Saints game on the 12th, vote early, October 28th through October, or excuse me, September 28th mm -hmm. through October 5th. There is no excuse not to vote. That's correct. All right. Again, thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being here. That's correct. So that's all we have for this week. Next week, we will have 
another Jefferson Parish um, candidate coming on. Not your, not the person running against you. <laughs> but uh, we will have um, candidate for state representative James C. James C. Simmons, who will be on next week. Um, so he's going to be talking about what he plans to do for his part of Jefferson Parish. Mm -hmm. So um, in the meantime, make sure you vote. And I have great news for those of you who know about our Black History Month Literary Weekend. It is coming back in 2020. And we already have the author lineup. And it's only September. Yay! So. Check this video out to see who you're going to see this coming February. February 28th and 29th, 2020. And that's after Mardi Gras, so I don't want to hear anything about parades. The parades will be over by then, so you can come to everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we always get somebody say, I can't come out. Really? There's a parade in my area. Okay. No, this is after Mardi Gras, so you can come out, enjoy the um, the Ivory and Cream affair, which is, that's our literary jazz brunch. We've already sold nine tickets for this brunch. And I haven't even started selling tickets yet. That's how awesome it is. I like that. Here you go. Here <laughs> and go. then we are going to have the world premiere of Twilight, the stage play, based on my best-selling novel, Twilight, um, which is about a young girl who went through some domestic abuse, and now she's working to overcome it. It's a really, really heart-touching story. My daughter's going to play Twilight. Um, she's an up-and-coming actress, and she's... So it's, it's going to go over there. We're going to go to Stax Records. We're going to go to Beale Street. You will be amazed how much history is on Beale Street. Yeah. yeah, It's a wonderful, wonderful area. So then after we spent the day in Memphis, we're going to jump back on a bus and we're going to Nashville. We're, we're, we're going to do some more sightseeing. Yeah. And because it'll be so close to Christmas, we're actually going to take you on a shopping trip as well. Ooh. Yes. And then... After that, the next day we're going to go see the game. We're going to go see our New Orleans Saints run right over the Tennessee Titans. It's going to be a game. It's going to get us right into the playoffs. Hopefully, we didn't well already have made the playoffs because you know that's more so. the end. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're going to have gift bags. We're going to be staying in a four-star hotel. You want to be a part of this. You do not want to miss this. So if you need more information on that, you can go to the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook page as well as our Instagram page to get more information on how you can get on that bus. You can also find us on Eventbrite, and you can also make your deposits right on Eventbrite. So there's no reason why you should miss this bus. All right, so that is all we have for tonight. That's good. Just want to let everybody know if you have any state issues out there, call my office, 504-510-5417, or email me at lionsr at Legis.la.gov. Legis. Yes. L E G I S dot L A dot G O V. <laughs> That's my office email. So I'll be glad to work with you, help you anything you need. Just give me a call. We will put that email address in the comment section for those of you who are like me and you need to copy and paste it. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> all right, so that's all we have for tonight. Once again, thank you for joining us in the studio Once tonight. Again, thank you for having me. I enjoyed myself. Um, 
I hope you guys got insight as to um, who I am. And uh, we're looking forward to serving as, again as we go forward. All right. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful night. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you next week with State Representative Candidate for District 80, James. Five zero five five eight nine four. See you there.